into it. Uh, Julia, what did you make of this session? We sort of really faded towards the end to close flat. James, the leads for our market weren't too bad. In the U.S., we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average near an eight-month high and the S&P 500 index up near a five-month high. And it looks like markets were quite optimistic overnight that a deal could be reached with Greece, even though we did see the EU finance ministers rejecting uh, the deal with the private creditors of Greek debt. So markets started off quite hopeful, but this afternoon things really turned. And in the end, it ended up being quite a risk-off day despite the ASX 200 finishing quite flat. We have a look at the small and the mid-cap space. We saw those indices down by 0.4%. And if we have a look at the intraday graph of the Australian market, you can see that the real turning point came in the afternoon around about 1.30. And you can see that the Australian market was just really reflecting what was happening in terms of the currency markets. We have a look at the euro versus the US currency today. This is what it looks like. And you can see that at 1.30 we broke uh, quite severely down in terms of the euro versus the US dollar across back below the 130 mark and we saw the same sort of pattern on the Australian dollar versus the US currency. The Aussie dollar had been above 105 US cents all day and then 130 came and we saw a break below that. The turning point seems to have come from the market focusing from Greece into Portugal and we have seen yields rising there. So as the focus shifted from Greece to Portugal, things once again turned negative. So it's been an extremely good three weeks on the market where we've pretty much forgotten about the European troubles. But once again, the focus on the European troubles, we saw this reflected in terms of the currency and we also saw this reflected in terms of the Australian market. And we had a few different pr production reports out today. I wanted to start with the, the big, obvious uh, gold mine at New Crop. Um, a couple of parts of this story. I suppose one uh, looking to list, uh, I think it's in March in uh, the Toronto Stock Exchange, that as well as uh, announcing a drop in production. But that production drop was pretty much in line with guidance, wasn't it? It was in line with guidance. The gu guidance was for 5.75 to uh, 575 to 585,000 ounces of gold, and we saw it coming in at 579,000 ounces. So pretty much in the middle of guidance for Newcrest Mining. Still for the second quarter, we did see output down by 20%, but that was well flagged in December, where we knew there was going to be an impact from the Cadia Valley as well as the Lahir mines. Not only that, in November we saw some asset sales, so that also uh, that also. Uh, contributed to the declining output that we saw coming from Newcrest Mining but it looks like a Toronto listing on the cards for the March quarter so that should be a positive for Newcrest Mining and also if we have a look at guidance we've really seen guidance remaining the same in terms of cost as well as in terms of production but um, we could see some of the the costs coming under a little bit of pressure but still guidance remaining the same for the time being and the gold mine is really doing quite well today CGA mining was an interesting one that was the best performing on the ASX today and it, this of course is a stock that's also listed on the Toronto exchange and on the Toronto uh, markets overnight we did see the stock jumping on the close it was up by 7.8 percent by the end of the session and the gains just continued here in Australia that stock up by about nine and a half percent today making it the best large cap performer on the Aussie market. Uh, oil search another one without uh, came out obviously with some numbers now it was a particularly good performer. What did you make of the numbers? It was on the upper end of its guidance. It was guiding for four year production, 6.2 to 6.9 million barrels of oil equivalent, and it came in at 6.69 million barrels of oil <laughs> equivalent. So on the upper end of production, and although production was down, we did see revenue higher, and that's because of the higher oil prices that we have seen. We have a look at production for uh, this company. It's going to be quite flat in 2012 and 2013, but it says future projects, especially the Papua New Guinea LNG project which is going to uh, give the, the stock a boost over the next few years and if we have a look at what's expected in terms of the PNG LNG project or well, with T1 and T2 coming online we should see the uh, production capacity of this company rising from about 21,000 barrels of oil equivalent all the way up to more than 60,000 barrels of oil equivalent that's including condensate by about 2015 so if we have a look at the growth profile for this company it's going to be very exciting over the next three years but in terms of production nothing exciting is going to be happening here over the next two years. Would you be a holder of the stock then Julia? I mean there's there's quite a, a diverse choice if you like of, of energy stocks in Australia with
of their own, each one with their own, I suppose, unique aspect. I mean, is Oil Search one that would fit into the, the Julia Lee buy bag? I think if we have a look at the long-term energy needs of both China and India, it's a pretty impressive profile, and that's the, the rationale between these huge LNG projects. Mm. But we have such a big number of LNG projects coming online over the next two to five years. And if we have a look at natural gas prices, then we have seen it coming under a fair amount of pressure over the last three months. In fact, we've only just seen it bottom out and coming back really this week. So in terms of pricing, we are seeing some short-term pressures building also, although the long-term case for projects like this are still uh, still intact. It's the short-term uh, issues that investors really need to really need to gauge because that, that seems to be a key driver of stock at the moment. We see big projects like the Papua New Guinea LNG project, the Gladstone LNG project, the AP LNG project, all coming online very quickly. So we're going to see massive supply hitting the market, and it really depends on the the appetite that we see coming through from the likes of China and India, which of course is driven by uh, global growth, which is going to impact these companies. So all the, all this happening in Europe at the moment are key for these energy producers and of course prices as well because we have seen our pricing coming under pressure this year. Now if my memory